Hey, look, I won Bat Runner. What is this? No one expected <laughs> it. But hey, yep, uh, my team did very well on Bat Runner. And uh, one big factor of that is the guest that we have on today. It's none other than World's Top 16 finisher, Philip Rover, also known as Heinzel. Hi, Heinzel. Hello. All right. So, yeah, uh, we have our first guest for our uh, post worlds coverage series. And I'm very honored to have Heinzel here. Um, yeah, so why don't you first introduce yourself? Uh, who are you and where are you from? Yeah, um, as you said, I'm Philip Rover. I'm from Germany. I've been playing Netrunner for a little bit over four years now. <laughs> that is very long, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like right after On and Profit was released, I started. Mm. So RP was legal back then as well. I play RP a lot. Yes, that is one thing I've heard from some of the viewers who are more familiar with you. You are like the RP guy. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, when you joined, uh, when you started playing Netrunner, how big was the German Netrunner scene? And how does it compare to like today? Mm, I think back then it actually was a little bit bigger than it is now oh. <laughs> so maybe the regionals weren't as um, big but the Uriju, uh, um community tournament was quite big back then like this year there were only uh, around 30 people there then it was like more than 60 um, like it fluctuated over the years and like it Yeah, I think overall it just it, it got a little bit smaller. Um, I see. I think you see a lot of people at tournaments who go to all the tournaments, so quite a few dedicated players you see a lot. Um, back then it was at every tournament you went to, you would see new people. Ah. So that's a big difference to back then. Yeah, I see. So <clears throat> now what we get to see is mostly the more seasoned players. Um, I yeah. think some of you might know uh, Christian, who does Teamwork Cast, um, mm -hmm. and F FOX, and Jack made some very prominent German players. Speaking of German players, how many of y'all um, went all the way to Worlds this year? I think it was four in total. So me, Tradon, FFOX, and... Unfortunately, I can't remember the last one's <laughs> name. <laughs> I hope they are not watching. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Okay. But yeah, um, pretty, it's very consistent. We always uh, see uh, several Germans around, especially during Euros as well. You all had quite a big group coming in uh, last Euros. So yeah, yeah it's pretty good uh, to get some German representation. And speaking of Euros, uh, a good transition. Uh, so yeah, uh, why don't let's talk about um, your netrunner journey starting from Euros. So at Euros, you made top sixteen. Was that right? Yes. You played. That was pre rotation, pre core two. Mm. So you actually played RP then. Yes. Yeah, and then following that, you you all had German nationals. Um. Yeah, there were some regions in between, but I didn't win any of them. Ah, well, who but needs a regional I, buy, right? You don't need a regional yeah, buy, just show up to I, I guess, nationals. Yeah, I got top in all three of them, but never could close it out. Ah, I see. Yeah, then there were the Dutch nationals. Mm -hmm. um, I played with the same decks as in the German nationals, but didn't do as good. I think there were two games where I made huge gameplay mistakes just because I wasn't very familiar with the decks, which could be... Um, it, it was a learning experience, let's let's put it that way. And then I could translate that into the German Nationals where I won. Yep, so going into um, Worlds this year, you actually had the buy from Nationals and you were the reigning champion. Yes. So yeah, uh, when I saw your stats on, Netrun uh, on Batrunner, I, I was looking like, whoa, this guy made top 16 at, at Euros and he's a German National Champion. He's only $3, that's pretty good value. <laughs> Yeah, and like also he's already won the first round of Worlds, so yes. that's some extra value right there. Yep. So yeah, uh, you turned out to be very valuable in my bet runner. So thanks for that. <laughs> so yeah, I think the big uh, the big thing with this is that RP was your pet deck throughout this journey. Uh, yes. It seems like it's the deck that's carrying you. 
So I guess um, you were prepared to go to Worlds and then suddenly call two hits and you realize that yeah. RP is no longer legal. How did you feel? I was sad. Like, <laughs> um, I've been playing this deck for four years. I only took a break from it last year during regional seasons and nationals because it was just wasn't good with Dumblefog around. Yep. And I really love playing RP. And now I don't get to play RP anymore, so... I was I was really hope like when I thought about going to Worlds this year um I w because Worlds is just so much fun yeah I just wanted to go um normally if the rotation was after Worlds like if I could bring RP to Worlds I would have gone um even if I hadn't won the nationals <laughs> but this so basically, you were thinking of not going to Worlds, but then with the Nationals by, you just went yeah. anyway. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So speaking of Worlds, um, is that your first? Is this year your first Worlds? I don't think so, right? Um, it's my second one. Two years ago, I also won the German Nationals and got sent to Worlds as well. Oh boy, two-time German National Champion. This yes. guy is a monster. Nice. Okay. So yeah, uh, you won your national buy, you're forced to go to Worlds, <laughs> like it or not, um, <laughs> but you can't play RP. So how did you um, begin searching for a new corp deck? Um, the Swiss people sent me an Arc Infusion list that they were playing before um, the rotation. I was looking at it, trying it out on jintanky.net, I made quite a few adjustments on it, like they had, I think, six money assets in it i reduced it down to one and um, just because i figured you can't really play glacier anymore um except if you're playing it department so i went with a rush strategy instead yeah trying to get out there before the runner can like it's if you ex if you have excalibur in palana uh, in air confusion you can actually rush quite fast if they don't have an ai and if they have an ai the deck has quite a lot of um, ai hate Yep, that sounds pretty good. So that was the basis for your corp deck, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, um, as you said, it's, it seems like a very fast deck. And I watched your stream. Sometimes you were pushing Nisei Mark II's at like turn 3, turn 4. It's super fast. I love it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I can see that like you're running Beanstalk just for the early burst economy. Seems pretty yeah. good. Um, I think uh, one big question that I think everyone has is that is going fast always the game plan? Like, is that something you do against every single runner? Or are there some matchups where going slow is better? Um, it is... I try to do it against every runner. The problem the deck has is that sometimes you just don't draw agendas and or you draw the wrong ones. Like, you really want to start the game out with a 4-2. Um, preferably preferably a Nisei. Yes. But yeah, like, um, there are games where it goes long just because you don't draw enough agendas or the runner can contest it to, like, contest your remote. Um, so you have to set up a situation where you, like, might feed them one in the scoring remote and then score another one the next turn. Mm, yes. There is always the agendas that you want to score. And I guess yeah. nowadays it's much harder to find your agendas. In the past, you used to have Jackson Howard. You can just keep drawing very quickly. Now you need yeah. the too fast track. So mm -hmm. that's another good part about your deck. Um, so yeah, um, I think you on stream for a, cup, a couple of videos. Um, while I was watching one of them live, um, supporting you because mm -hmm. you were on my Batrunner <laughs> team, <laughs> um, I received a message from QBM, which you might know is one of the Swiss Netrunners. Oh yeah. Yeah, like, and he told me I it's like, I don't agree with his restricted card. <laughs> I'd rather play Obokata. So you yeah. ended up going with Fetch Out 3. So tell us a bit about that. What do you feel about that? Um, you know, with Fetch Out 3, you can just um, ice the remote, put a Fetch Out in front of it, and an agenda behind it. Mm -hmm. um, so most runners aren't prepared to break a Fetch Out 3 twice in the other game. So it's it's just really a solid um, scoring ice, and it's also punishing on face checks, so it slows them down even more when they try to contest. So this um, gives you just a lot of tempo. If you if they can't, don't manage to break it and you get to score behind it, it's just great. Yeah. So for those of you. Um... 
wondering what he's referring to. So if you have two pieces of ice, if Fairchild is the outer one, and yes. your inner ice can be anything, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, they have to ru- they have to be able to break the Fairchild twice because um, the first run they have to run through it, and Heinzel will sneakily send them to another server with Agon Fusion's ability. So that's pretty strong. Um, yeah. So yeah, pretty sh- pretty cool deck. Um, let's head into the mall and keep action, uh, where our top 16 competitor will take us through what he thinks are good hands to keep in your opening and what are not so good hands. Um, so which runner did you face the most against at Worlds? Um, Haley, maybe? I think, I think it was actually quite diverse. Ah. Okay. Um, I think Valencia was the one I faced the most, but I only faced her twice during Swiss and once during the cut. Hmm. Yeah, Valencia seemed pretty powerful. All right, let's go with Valencia then. So let's assume that you're uh, up against Valencia. And, mm, okay. Yep, you draw this hand. So let's see. You have the Nisei, which you mentioned. Uh, two pieces of yeah. ice, Batty and Fast Track. Is that a keep? Um, no, because you don't have any economy yep and you're scoring ice is shiachi in this case so <laughs> that's <is> pretty <laughs> bad yeah 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 um i'm looking at a deck it has like nine uh the nine standard economy burst economy cards and two bean stocks so it should be quite common that you see one in your opening hand yes. so yeah that's a mal what about this one um oh you now you have money ooh, you have one, say. yeah this one looks much better it looks nice huh okay yeah I guess one of the trickiest parts of playing Glacier, even though this is a rush Glacier, is that it's quite hard to decide which ice should go on centrals and which go on your remote. So let's say you yeah. begin, you mandatory draw into preemptive action. What's you, I guess you play hedge fund and two ice? Yeah, um, hedge fund, uh, you go on R&D and IP block on HQ just to um, force them to face the trace if they want to see what's in my hand. And I don't want to lose the Nisei, so... Yep, that sounds good. And if on your next turn you draw into IPO, so I guess if on your second turn you want to rush this Nisei out, I guess you want to draw more cards? Is that how you would play this? Um, let me think. So I'm currently at 9. Get 5 from that. Yes, you are at 9. I think I just would, like, depending on his board state, I would just would take two credits and IPO, so um, the next turn I can Chiyashi still advance the Nisei, Nisei advance. and yep. rest the Chiachi to protect it. Yep, seems good. Yeah, it's a bit hard scoring behind Chiachi because that takes you down to so few credits, but yes, IP block and Yagura are so cheap. That seems pretty good. Yeah, this seems like a good opening. Let's do one last one. Um, mm. Ooh, three ice, two agendas, no money. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Very borderline, it's isn't actually, it? Um. Yeah. It's because it's against Valencia, and they are probably just running to Amakawa as their AI. Yes. It might be possible to rush behind the Excalibur. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. But you're still lacking the money to do so. I think I wouldn't keep this just because there are so many draws that can be so bad in this situation. That is true, and you, yeah. And you're really, really giving up your early game just to commit to this one plan. Mm. But if you're forced to stick with this hand, maybe you mulligan into it. I guess your main plan, given yeah. this hand, is probably like using Chiashi as Egg Infusion Ice and scoring behind Excalibur. Yeah. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. So yeah, I think one thing you see very importantly from uh, this mile keep is that it's actually quite important to consider who your opponent is. Like knowing that Valencia is on Omaqua, uh, can be quite a u- quite useful information and can determine whether you keep or mount the hand. So, yeah, that's quite interesting. Thanks for that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was your corp deck. Let's move on to your runner deck, which I think everyone is here for. <laughs> the only <laughs> criminal in top sixteen. This is amazing. So tell us, um, what. So while you were preparing for Worlds, Worlds, how did you settle on this deck? Um, I started out with Smoke and in... Like, I don't have a testing group, so most of my testing comes from just playing on JNet. Yep. Um, I was playing quite a lot of Asset Spam, Smoke couldn't compete with it at all, just um, you couldn't keep up. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking just about building a runner, like what can I do for economy? 
I looked through the. Um, I, I looked at every card that gains you credits, <laughs> and then I found calling in favors. I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe you can make that work. Um, also, I was um, thinking that Paperclip would be actually like in the new Eli, like every deck is going to play just because Amakawa and Dean Lister are so good. You need the AI breaker to compete with Mythic Eyes CI. So everybody should be on um, the. So everybody should be should have a a eye breaker and paper clip. Um, I, yeah, and IP block is just um, so good against AI. Like it's really annoying. It's only one influence, costs two to res. Mm -hmm. So I thought Link might be good as well. And it will, while we're at Link, we could um, add Mr. Phones because <laughs> it's Mr. like yeah. Yeah, yeah, he has a good drip economy. Um, then I was looking at the one link runners um, in, and the good ones are gone. Like the um, Kate and Andy aren't there anymore. Yep. You have like other options. Okay, Edward Kim is actually a good runner, but um, I f don't think it this style really fits. Yeah, um, Edward the, Kim is quite and aggressive. I, yeah. Yeah, and. Then I looked at the Grimmels there. The other option is, I think, Ian. Yes. And I was like, well, everybody's saying that Geist is the only play, uh, play with a crimi criminal anyways. And since you're in Geist, you're pretty much every time running three Street Peddler, three Fall Guy, three Trick Trader. You actually have quite a lot of, lot of resources to work with. Um, on, and then on top of that, you add the Underworld Contacts, um, some of the new cards like Maxwell James, Dean Lister. And you add, you. You have quite a lot of um, connections in your deck. Yep. Seems to be good. So this deck actually started off not as a guy's deck, but as a, hey, I have Paperclip, I have uh, Omaqua. Hmm, how can I get a Link Runner? <laughs> and yeah. you just settle on guys. So not a lot of trash cans in your deck. Like, I think the, mo the first thing most people notice is that you're not running the uh, Crowbar, Shift, and Spike in your yeah. breakers at all. They're not that good, are they? Uh, no, they are not. Like, I've played with it a few times back in the day when I, when, I was, when guys came out and I was trying out guys. Um, but it's they just take so much time to really set up, and they're so slow to set up. Hmm. Um, also, like they have trash cans on them, but they those are quite conditional trash cans because you have to be making a run to use them and encountering a piece of ice that you actually can break with them. Yep. Yeah, S sounds like that's a lot of restrictions. And anyway, yeah. it seems like yeah, you are running a lot of resources anyway. You don't have the deck slots for them. And yeah, you want to be spending your clicks installing resources instead of icebreakers. So yeah, a lot of resources. I can't count how many connections are there. That's a, a lot. But do you remember what's the most money you gain from calling in favors during the whole tournament? Oof. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm not sure anymore. Like I know one time when I levied and had to calling in favors in hand, I was like, okay, click one, install something. Like yeah, click one, uh, levy. Click two, install something. Click three and four, play two calling favors, take twenty credits, <laughs> which felt quite right. good. Yep, I think that that gets you in anywhere. That's that's a lot of money. So yeah, um, uh, pretty amazing deck. Um, so yeah, so um, very. Very interesting, and I think a lot of, you will see a lot of it on JNet in the next few days yeah. as people want to try this German Geist, as it's called. Um, it seems like a lot of Germans were also on it. Did, they, did you share the tech with them, and did they find it good as well? Um, one other German, I think, was on it, FFOX. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, we were testing on AdWords with um, Asker, so Tutketut. Yes. Against uh, different decks, I think mostly against uh, Brain Rewriting and against the Reverse Accounts CI. Mm -hmm. And that actually did quite good, so um, Alex decided to bring it as well. Like, um, The tech was open to everyone who I was playing with at the time, and um, everyone I met who asked me to play a game. And she decided, well, it doesn't look that bad, and went with it as well. Nice. And made day two. Yeah. So two, two, two criminals total day two. That's 
<laughs> really sad. It's sad. Um, I was thinking criminal would be the worst faction, but thanks to you, uh, the yeah. worst faction is actually Waylon, not criminal. So well done on representing yeah. criminal. Yeah. Uh, for those of you wondering, the tech against uh brain rewiring brain re- rewiring CI is on the lamb. Yes, on the lamb is amazing. Yeah, it like prevents it... any kind of damage. So. Yeah. yeah, and you can draw into it pretty quickly. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's that- also really, really good against CTM just because you can you start this and you can go low on credits trashing their stuff and like they can't really hard hitting use you just because it doesn't do much. Yeah. Because you're preventing three tags from landing. Like in Swiss, I played four C. Was it four CTMs? Yeah, I you you wrote four CTMs four. in your right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that one by far was the most common matchup you had, and you had all the link for it, so that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. C- CTM seems like a very good matchup for you, uh, because you can let them score a couple of agendas early, and then just <laughs> overwhelm them late game. So yeah. speaking of that, let's go into the Mal or Keep, uh, and we'll mm-hmm. pretend we are playing against CTM, since okay. that's what you're familiar with. So first hand, um, off campus, drug dealer, sports hopper, this handler, is a keep. fall guy. <laughs> So I think most people want to uh, mulligan for tech trader when they are guys, but for you, for this guys, is it slightly different? Um, you don't necessarily need it, and the street peddler lets you see five card, five new cards, anyways, with the off-campus apartment. That's true. Like, like this, Candace just uh, draws you so many cards for so little investment mm. that I think you should keep it. Yeah, that seems good. And with all the card draw that you mentioned, you probably will draw one or two tech traders along the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's that seems good. Um, so I guess, I mean, CTM probably would do something like install two assets and ice on R and D or something like that. So yeah, would you? An interesting question is: Would you play aggressive? Would you check remotes, run HQ, or would you just set up on your first turn? I think I would just set up, like off campus peddler. Yeah, off campus peddler, fall guy, and depending on what I draw. So, off campus draws you into spy cam, and the last three cards are your peddler cards. Yeah, and. So, then I would just play a fall guy on the off campus apartment. Drawing a card, that's Mr. Phones. And then the drug dealer just to get more card draw going. Mm, yeah, and you, get, and you get another card because it's also a connection. Yes. Yeah, you can see how quickly he draws cards. And he hasn't even popped any of his four guys yet. So yeah. he's going to have money. He's going to have a lot of cards. That seems like a very good opening, even though there's no time. And in the next turn, you could just do Maxwell James in another word contacts. And if you draw a um, calling in favors in the in uh, any of the next turns, you just go back up to a, like, to a good amount of money, yes. which lets you... Con- Set up for the like calling favors is actually really really good in this deck. I found like sometimes against like if you don't have the trick traders early, you actually go quite low on money. Yep. Um, and calling favors just lets you bridge that gap. Yeah, definitely. Um, one thing I've always complained about calling in favors is that um, it doesn't usually pay off very well until you are in the mid game. But having seen yeah. this opening hand that you have, you have what one two at least four or five um, connections on turn two. So calling favors yeah. is already as good as a show gamble. That's really good. All right, uh, let's try another hand against CTM. Oh, this doesn't look good. This doesn't look good. Yeah, I would mulligan this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what about this one? Uh, there's a tech trader, there's a fall guy, and a hopper. Yeah, I think this one like, looks quite good. Like um, tech trader, fall guy, um, you can play the spots over to draw more cards. So that gives, gives you a lot of options as well. Mm, so if you probably do that in your first turn, you got your second tech trader, spy cam, that's not too bad. Yeah. Alright, do a couple more. What about this one? Lots of Mr. Phones and a link. That's it. <laughs> this, the best one is actually interesting. Yes. I, I don't think I would keep it, but I wouldn't be sad if I got it. On the mulligan. Yeah. Yeah. Again, well, maybe I would like that. Mm. Like same or same thing. And Abignell are both bad. Yes. In the early game. Mm-hmm. But getting uh, Mr. Phones early is really really good. Like I had a similar hand um, in one of my CDM matches. Yep. But there I also had a street peddler. 
with, which actually got me a cheaper link than the Spots Hopper, and so I could do two Underworld contacts on turn one. Yep. So. Yeah, opening yeah, with like. Us. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Like, this hand is really lacking in draw. Like, you only have the Spots Hopper, and you don't really want to use it since you want to um, keep your um, Underworld contacts, giving you money. Mm -hmm. So, like, this, this isn't a great hand at all. But, but if you were stuck with it, I guess your first two clicks will be spent drawing, I guess? Um, the first one is would most certainly be draw. Spy cam? Eh. Yeah, and then probably just sports hopper, spy cam, and underworld. Yep. Yeah, then next turn maybe draw into cards using spy cam, try to get some yeah. money up. Yeah, so it's quite borderline depending on what you draw. Yeah. Well, but that's very interesting analysis still. Um, and anyway, having early link is good against CTM. Uh, a lot of the yes. ice has are tracers, so it always helps. Right, let's do one more. Um, uh. This is a no. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> skip that. <laughs> this? This is quite good, yeah. Like, all compass apartment, tech trader, you install the spy cam. If you draw into any other connections, mm. okay, then it would be a draw. Yep. <laughs> okay. I guess you just um, keep drawing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, this can happen sometimes. It doesn't happen often just because you have so much draw at your disposal. Yep. But, like, sometimes you can draw in your, all your breakers, then the levies. Like, that happened, and that was one thing that cost me a game against a CTM in the cut. Yeah. But, well, every deck has its poor draws, and yeah. know, this just happens to be one of them. But, yeah, it's quite interesting and very insightful indeed. Um. Of course, it must be mentioned that, um, as with most runner decks, your guys' deck has definitely some very weak matchups. Scarcity of resources is probably game ending. Yes. Uh, did it you really face is. any on the day? No, I was quite lucky not to. Mm. Yeah, so <laughs> making top 16 requires some luck. But um, yeah. even if you have the luck, you must play as well as Heinzo did to get how far he did. All right, so that's the guys' deck, uh, and that's uh, the deck list wrap up. Uh, we'll finish off with a couple of questions from the viewers, so let's head into that. Um, all the questions seem to be related to your deck list, so I think a lot of um, viewers actually appreciate the cool decks that you brought to Top 16, while everyone else was on boring stuff like CI or Haley. Mm. Yeah, you had um, some of the most interesting decks. So let's start with QVM, who as we discussed earlier was from the Swiss meta. QVM asks, which card that is not Caprice Nisse does Rush Egg Infusion need in order to win Worlds? <laughs> Very ambitious. I, I don't think there's a card they can do that, just because the Haley, like I didn't know about the Haley matchup for uh, going into it, and the Haley matchup is actually really bad. Like hmm. generally against Tepworm, you can just go low, but um, if you take too much time with them, they just get fan sites and too much value of that, so you can't actually score out. And I don't think like this deck is tier one just because I think Haley was the de deck to beat at Worlds. Yeah. And like, y you you can't play it as Rush anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's a card that would make it. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. we'll see one in the new cycle that um, helps Rush Egg Infusion because it's a really interesting deck list, uh, Rush Glacier. And hopefully I, I would like to see more of it in the meta. Yeah. Right. Uh, next question from Herbert Klopstock. How hard, how difficult was it to transition from RP to Egg Infusion? Um, I don't think... Like, it's really different to play, but um, since I've played, played against Egg Infusion in tournaments before, it wasn't that hard. Like, you, you got um, some interesting insights just by playing it when you can see, okay, I can redirect them here. I can do this stuff with my ability. The ability is quite interesting, and it's a lot more um, proactive than the RP one, yep. which I really like. But yeah, the tra transition wasn't wasn't that bad. Yeah, they at the end of the day, they are both glacier decks. I can see that. Uh, yeah. The second part of the question was: uh, Did you actually did you play against the UK Egg Infusion, the IT department one? No, and I'm happy that I didn't. Like, <laughs> I think round. It was round seven. There was a game that went into time. It was the first game against this deck. Like, this deck can just take so long. 
Yeah. Just, it's, like, I've thought about taking that just because I know it's really good, but um, I don't think it is really good in a tournament environment just because it takes, it can take so long to just finish the game. Mm, that's quite true, yeah. Well, you're busy mashing IT department, time might get called. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Nembras, also from the Swiss Meta, asks, um, after playing quite a rushy Glacier deck with Ops Econ at Worlds, do you think that classic Glacier decks with assets, something like your RP deck, will ever be viable again? Well, it might be. Like, we don't know what's coming up. Um, I think it's in a tougher spot just because you can't just uh, put assets on the table anymore like you used to, just because the assets got pushed so much that everybody should be prepared to be able to trash them. That's something that, like, two years ago wasn't really the case. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to take a lot of work just because, like, what, make, what made it work before was Caprice, that you had this remote that... Your opponent didn't really want to contest. You don't have that anymore, and yeah, we 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 would need some good defensive upgrade to make this happen again. Yeah, that's quite true. Yeah, because asset econ glacier decks typically cannot score agendas that fast, and yeah, it's it's quite hard to make a uh, slow glacier work uh, with only Marcus Petty. I can see that. Yeah. Um, he also asked how you got the idea from your guys. Uh, for your guys' deck, I should say. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, actually, we kind of answered that. Uh, yeah. We talked about how the guys' deck came about. So, yeah, we'll move on to the next question from Luke. Uh, he congratulates you for taking Criminal into the cut. Uh, and how did you prepare your deck for the field that you expected to see at Worlds? So, did you have an idea of what Worlds would be like? What will the popular decks be? And how do you prepare against that? Um, I was actually only playing on Janet Competitive. So it, I just, I just, I, basically, I was preparing for the Janet competitive meta, and I, like, I had some ideas what other decks could be played at Worlds, but I actually just got to test it against them. Um, at Worlds itself, I got to play with my roommate Asuka, mm -hmm. and the Nordics national champion, yep. and with FFOX, which actually helped quite a lot just to see um, how you have to play different matchups. But I went to Worlds with just my decks, like no additional cards, just ready to take them, to, so I don't have to worry at Worlds about um, building something completely new, just because I had experience with these decks. I, I think I played like about 100 games on JNet. That's a lot! <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, you, you did a lot of work to prepare for this Worlds. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, well done once again. Um, and yeah, I think that's really cool that um, you were kind of insulated from all the not, all the crazy CIA and all the Haley decks that were going around um, from what I heard in the US and the UK. Otherwise, you might not bring Egg Infusion. We wouldn't get this yeah. really fun rush deck. So yeah, congratulations once again and very well yeah, done. Thank you. Yep. So that will wrap up this uh post world coverage, uh, our small little Q&A with uh, Philip. So yeah, uh, any shout outs or any, yeah, any shout outs you want to give to maybe uh, the German meta or something? Um, not necessarily the German meta, but for example, QV QVM was the one who first pitched me the Arc Infusion deck. Mm -hmm. So a shout out to him and yeah, to Oscar and FFOX for testing with me at Worlds. Yeah, all right. Well, hope I'll get to meet you all again some other time. Maybe Euros mm -hmm. next year. You never know. Yeah. Yep. But until then, it's goodbye from Heinzel. Mm, goodbye. And goodbye from me. Thanks for watching and happy night running.